Welcome to Draw This. Draw This is a series of videos where I'll randomly generate a word and then draw it for you in real time while describing my process so that you, the viewer, can follow along. We'll go ahead and get started by randomly generating a word here. I'm on wordgenerator.net and the random word that I get today is torch. So I'm going to do kind of a medieval style torch. And this will be a special episode because I'm going to be using the brand new Corel Painter 2015 which just came out today, and it's a really awesome piece of software. You can download the free 30-day trial to try it out. It's fully functional, so you can follow along with this video. And the cool thing about Painter 2015 is there are a set of brushes called particle brushes, which make painting fire really, really easy. So we'll take a look at how to do that while we paint our torch. So here inside of Painter 2015, I have a new canvas, which is 16 by 20 inches at 72 DPI but you could use any size canvas that you want. Since this is gonna be kind of a vertically oriented piece, we're just gonna use this vertical orientation, which is taller. And you'll notice that I'm working with a brand new workspace for 2015. This is the new rendering, blending, and image hose and watercolor icons. And these are icons that I made myself because I found that my workspace needed a little bit of upgrading. So if you're using the default version of Corel Painter, you're probably not going to see any of these icons unless you have my workspace loaded. My workspace is available as a download and you can just follow the link in the video description to get there and download that. But We'll go ahead and get started painting here. So I'm going to create a new layer and I'm going to call this torch. This will just be the stick that comes out of the torch here. So we're going to make things a little bit easier by using the mirror painting feature. And now we can paint symmetrically so that we can just paint one side of this torch and it'll come out nice and straight on the other side. We're going to use the scratch board tool and you'll notice there's a lot of abbreviations here. If you want to just see what the name of the brush is, you can either click on it or just hover over it. And these abbreviations I, I thought would help people and I hope that they do. It really helps me a lot because as it was before, there were just a bunch of icons that looked the same. So even if the abbreviations are weird, I think it's a little more helpful. We'll take a look at the scratch board tool. I like to use this one a lot just for making nice big shapes. We'll pick a dark brown and let's start painting and see what happens. You can see when we paint with this mode on, we get a nice symmetrical painting. So what we're going to want to do is decide where the base of the torch is going to be. Maybe it'll be right here and then it'll come up to right around here maybe. Don't worry about getting this perfectly straight. I'm going to use keyboard shortcut here to resize my brush a little bit larger. That is holding control and alt and dragging your pen. And just fill it in there and then if we want to refine this and make it a little smoother we can use the pinch brush and if we paint along the edge with the pinch brush it'll just kind of squish those pixels together and smooth them out. You want to use kind of long strokes and paint along the edge to smooth it out. Get something like that we're looking pretty good. This top edge doesn't matter too much because we can cover it up a little bit with something else, which we'll do on this next layer. We'll create a new layer and we will call this, let's call this middle. This will be like the middle metal piece. There'd be kind of like a metal thing that holds the embers or the fuel for the torch. Let's make that kind of a brownish gray color. We'll use the scratch board tool again just to fill this in. And this will be kind of a little attachment area here. I don't know what you would call that. We'll create another layer and let's move that below the middle. Let's call this top. Forgive me for not being technical with my names here. I'm not too familiar with the anatomy of a torch as far as the names of everything. And sometimes it's easier just to put in short names here rather than be too descriptive because in the end your layers are only going to serve a purpose for so long. So this would be kind of the cone that we'll use to put the fire into. And again, we will use the pinch brush to go ahead and just smooth that out. You need to be careful near your corners because you have to do really quick kind of right angles to form that corner without it getting messed up. Something like that looks pretty good. And I noticed there's not a whole lot of room for the fire, which is going to be the most important part of this video. So what we can do is we can just hold shift on our keyboard tap on the bottom torch layer after selecting the top, which is the middle, and we can group those by doing control G. Let's call this group torch. And now we can manipulate this group. 
Now within my new workspace that I created, I have a few new shortcuts, one of which is a shortcut that will enable free transform, which is control T. And I made it that way because in, in Photoshop, control T does free transform. And I just find that that's really quick and easy for me to go to. So I'm going to do control T and I'm just going to drag the top of the torch down a little bit to make some room for the fire. Maybe we'll make it a little bit skinnier. I guess all that did was just make it smaller, but that's all I wanted to do. We'll click this checkbox to confirm. And we can go ahead and turn off this mirror painting mode by clicking on the mirror painting icon. And you just hit the on off switch here and that'll go away. We're going to need a dark background to be able to see our fire. So we'll want to go to the canvas layer, which is just the bottom most layer, select black. And we'll use the paint bucket or we can click this fill button to just fill with current color. Now, if you're getting something that looks a little bit different, there's a weird pattern or something, you have to change this fill to current color. Or if you were using the paint bucket, you'll want to make sure that the paint bucket's set to current color because by default, it's maybe going to do this and you're not going to be very happy with that. So set it to current color, you'll get the right result. You might notice a little bit of white fringe depending on how much you use these distortion and pinch brushes. If you get that, that's okay because we can just go to the torch layer turn on Preserve Transparency, grab that scratch board tool again, and with Preserve Transparency on, we can't paint outside of this shape. So we'll hold Alt on our keyboard to select this brown color and just paint over that edge, it goes away. I notice there's a little bit on the other part as well, so we'll go to the top, we'll do the same thing. Sample that color, we'll just paint away that fringe, no problem. You always wanna to try to catch this fringe at the early stages, otherwise it's gonna be hard to deal with later, especially if you flatten all your layers. So we're done with Preserve Transparency, we can turn that off. Let's create a layer below the torch, and we'll call it Flames. Now here's where we get into the good part. These are the new particle brushes. These are variants that I made myself for different purposes, and one of the ones that I made is called Flames. It's just a slight variation of one of the brushes that already comes with Painter, which is called Spring Flame Glow, and I just tweaked it a little bit. So you can use mine or you can use that one, depending on what you want to do. Now you have to select the right color. You might think that fire is going to be something like this, a really bright orange. And you're right, it will be orange in hue, but you're going to want to make it pretty dark because this brush is going to build up the color. It's going to get brighter and brighter and brighter, and you don't want it to go to white too fast. I'll show you what I mean. If I pick a nice bright color and I paint with this brush, it's kind of pale. It doesn't look right. If you make it darker, then you get more of a flame color because it builds up a little more gradually. Another important thing is to set the composite method to screen so that it will blend with your background naturally. So I'm just going to tweak this color a little bit and see if I like these results. Now, depending on how you want to make this fire, fire goes in a lot of random patterns. So you could do long strokes and get something like this, if that's the kind of fire that you want, and just build it up. You could even simulate wind. Maybe the wind's blowing on the torch and it's blowing the fire off to the side. You can do little chunks that break off. These brushes are amazing because what they do is if you tap and you hold, you see you get these little particles, these little nodes that kind of attach with a string to your main tip of your pen. And they can spin around and follow your brush and do all kinds of different things. There's a few different modes of particle brushes, and I'm not going to get into those in this video. I'm going to do a whole in-depth video on all of the particle brushes, so stay tuned for that. But for now, we'll just take a look at how to use this one. So I like that kind of fire. If you wanted a different kind of fire, you could create a new layer and again make it a screen composite method, and you could just kind of scribble back and forth to get more of a rough kind of flame. Fire can sometimes move a lot or it can move a little, and you get kind of different shapes. There's no universal shape for fire. There's kind of a universal color, but not really a universal shape. Now, you may want to add a little bit more of a glow on a screen layer and move that kind of up above all the other layers and go ahead and use the glow brush for this with a pretty big diameter and just add a little bit of glow if you need to to make it kind of stand out over the background. It's really kind of optional. I don't know that it necessarily helps here. Let's use a little bit. Okay, so we obviously need to add some detail to our torch here. And the reason why I waited to do it is because 
I wanted to be able to see the fire first. The fire is going to be reflected in this metal. So we'll go to the top layer. We'll turn on preserve transparency again. And we'll go ahead and use the airbrush. And we will sample this color that we're using here. And we'll make it a little bit lighter. Use kind of a medium airbrush. And we just want this to look kind of metallic. So you want it to look kind of like a cylinder that kind of starts to become a cone almost. So just do these stripes, stripes and streaks. And that'll end up looking a lot like metal. But I'm not using, I'm not really using gray. I'm using kind of a tinted gray and white and black. So keeping a little bit of this environment color. And then you can start sampling colors from your fire and throw those in. I'll help this to look a little more metallic. And then we can blend it using the coarse oily blender. You may want to look at your paper settings and see what you have. You'll have to really play around with these settings to get the effect that you want. Whether or not you want texture is up to you. I think I do want a little bit of texture as I blend. So I'm trying to just blend it and make it look a little rough. We'll use the diffuse blur to smooth it out a little bit. And I'm just doing these strokes that kind of follow the contour of the metal. Go back to the airbrush, we'll add a little bit more rim highlight on the edge there to just help that look a little more curved. And let's add some shadow near the bottom. And on the top edge, let's add some light to make that pop out. Okay. Let's add a little bit of texture over that too. We could add the, add the texture on a separate layer if you wanted to. I think for this, for the sake of this tutorial, we won't bother with that. I'm gonna use the sponge for the texture. Just a big sponge and just tap. We'll want to reduce the opacity a little bit, maybe to 10. A couple little taps, that'll make it look a little more weathered. We'll go to the middle layer. That's this thing here. We'll use the airbrush and we'll just try to follow the same process that we did before using the same colors. You can just sample again using Alt on your keyboard. This is kind of a torus that you're viewing kind of turned or rotated away from you. So you could treat it just kind of like a long cylinder that kind of wraps around. And again, I'm just using these colors that are harmonious to everything that's going on. Just these warm grays and warm whites and warm blacks and the highlights from the fire. And then let's go to the, let's add some texture using the sponge as we did before. And then let's go to the torch layer, which is the stick that's coming out of the bottom. We'll use the airbrush for that. Sample that color, that brown color, and we'll darken it. We'll add a little bit of shadow being cast from the part of the torch, the metal part. And then we'll just shade the sides, help this look nice and three-dimensional. Add some light down the center. If you wanted to turn on mirror painting mode, you could do that again if you're worried about getting everything straight. But I want this to look like it's smooth, but not super smooth, so it looks more organic. Let's blend that a little bit using the coarse oily blender. Gives it some more character. And we'll smooth it out a little bit with the diffuse blur. Just painting straight down. Try to avoid your edges because you'll get this weird fringe sometimes if you blend near the edges. We'll use the sponge to put on that texture with a dark color. Dark, almost black. It's really starting to look like wood now. Maybe we'll add a little bit of color to our background so that this just looks a little more interesting. I'm gonna take kind of a red orange and use the airbrush. Just to maybe put in something like that, vary the color a little bit. You can kind of paint behind your fire to make it glow if you want to. I don't know if I like that though. All right, and then we just need to do a few more little finishing touches to help this look a little better. I'm thinking this glow on top, I'm not liking so much, so I'm gonna ditch that. And then, on the torch layer, which is the stick, I'm going to use the airbrush 
to add a little bit of orange reflected color onto that. That'll help it look more natural. Something like that looks better. And then we'll go to the top layer. Still seems a little too dark. So I'll lighten that edge there. That helps a little bit. Let's go to the middle layer. Something like that helps it pop out a little bit more. And we need some reflection from the wood on the middle layer to help that look more natural. We can reflect in some of the colors from the background. Now it'll really start to look like it's all part of the same world here. Maybe we'll add some texture to the background. Maybe this is a torch that's hanging on a wall. So we'll take a dark red. We'll use that sponge and we'll crank up the texture, this or the opacity this time of the sponge to get more texture. Maybe we'll make the sponge bigger. And we will want to go ahead and blend that a little bit using the coarse oily blender. And blend it a little bit with diffuse blur. Now we have some texture in our background. Looks a little more interesting. And then let's zoom out to evaluate what we have. If it looks good small, then you know you're on the right track. So there you go. That's how you paint a torch using the new Corel Painter 2015 that comes with the particle brushes. And if you want access to these particle brushes or this workspace, you can download it from my website at aaronrutten.com. If you enjoyed this episode of Draw This, I hope you'll join me every Tuesday for a new episode. And take a quick second to like the video and share it. And you can also help grow my channel by clicking the subscribe button if you want to see more new videos as they're released. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next Tuesday.